Hello, I'm going to run through quickly how to flash a micro SD card so that you can put it in a Raspberry Pi and build a Rune endpoint. Uh, we're going to need a couple of applications to be installed already, and I'll walk through what those are, what those are so that you can follow along. Uh, first, we're going to go and download the image. We'll go to dietpy.com, downloads, Raspberry Pi, and download the image. Uh, I'm just going to save all of this stuff to the desktop to make it a bit easier to find. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to connect a micro SD card now. I just attached a micro SD card to my computer. Um, sometimes it's a good idea to uh, reformat them. There's an application called SD Card Formatter. If you Google for that, you can find the download. Uh, the application looks something like this, and it allows you to quickly format your card if you need to. I've already formatted mine, so it's good. Um, it's not always necessary, but if you run into any problems, this application can help you properly format an SD card since it comes from the SD Card Foundation to make sure that uh, the card has a good shot of working for you. Uh, next step is to flash our image to the SD card. Uh, normally I would use Etcher to do that. You can go to etcher.io to find the software. Um, here the DietPy image is in a 7z format, which Etcher unfortunately doesn't understand, at least not with this extension. Um, so we'll need to unpack that first. Um, and there's a program called Kika that can be used to do that. You can find out more information about that here, www.kika.io. Um, in this case, I can just double click on the file since I already have this installed and Kika will unpack the 7z file. And we have our image file here. So now if I go back to Etcher, I can grab the image file. I can look at our media. The media, the SD card that I have in the my card reader is 64 gigs. So this looks correct. I want to make sure that that's right so I don't accidentally erase some other drive. There's some settings in Etcher to make sure that you don't have what they call unsafe mode on that would destroy your operating system. It's a good idea to leave that unchecked. In fact, I leave all of these unchecked except for updates. Uh, we'll go ahead and flash that image now. kind of fun. There's a little project here for using a Raspberry Pi uh, as a Bluetooth audio interface. That's pretty cool. Might be worth checking that out later on. We're audiophiles, so we don't care much about Bluetooth, but it can be fun for background music. And now we, we see, uh, because I told Etcher to leave the do device mounted, we have this boot drive that's showing up here now. So um, the next step is going to be to modify some initial boot configurations so that our installation is ready to go. So I'm going to go to um, ws-e.com slash dietpy setup. This is a little script that I wrote that sets up dietpy with the correct parameters. I'm going to save that to our that boot partition. So dietpy setup, save to that, boot, that little boot drive. That's the SD card that's in my laptop. All right, and now if I cd to put up a terminal window and cd to volumes boot, I can see there's a dietpy setup file here that I downloaded. You don't need to concern yourself with all the details, but it's just a little program that essentially asks for some of these parameters and configures those on the card. So we can run the the setup with dietpy setup like this, or we could say Perl dietpy setup since it's a Perl script. It's going to ask us to give us a name for our Raspberry Pi, so we'll call it uh, Kitchen Pi since it's going to be something that I'm using in the kitchen. 
Um, I'm going to say yes, and I do have a Wi-Fi network. If I said no, then it would only configure the device to boot using a LAN connection. I can put my Wi-Fi SSID, my home, my, and this is where you put actually the parameters for your home network. Your SSID is whatever your network's called, and then whatever password people have to use or devices in your house have to use to connect to your network. And then it'll tell you what parameters it updated. Um, it updated a couple of different files, diapy.txt and diapywifi.txt, and these are the settings that it changed. Uh, so now that we've done that, we can eject the card by just dragging it to the trash, which is kind of disturbing, but that's how it works on a Mac. Oh, hang on, I've got to get out of here first. And now if we boot the Raspberry Pi with those settings, it will uh, it'll come up on our Wi-Fi network and it'll have Rune pre-installed. So uh, it'll just show up and Rune as an output as long as there's a audio output device attached to the Raspberry Pi. So for example, a USB DAC or if the Raspberry Pi itself has a sound card on it, it should just show up. Um, you'll be able to log into it. If you can find the IP address, the root password is still root and the password is just diet pi. Hope this has been helpful.